affect businesses? And why should they make a shift? I asked this question to Evan Yu when I interviewed him for the VIEW report Amsterdam 2022. We prepared this report especially for you, for participants of this conference. He said, I would suggest evaluating each situation on a case-by-case -case basis. Recently, I've seen some comments about Vue 3 that Vue has shot itself in the knee with the way the change is happening. And personally, it hurts me. And I started to wondering why. And maybe it is because I went through it myself. But let me start from the beginning. I was born in a small city in Poland. Maybe I should skip a few years. And my first view project. Before my first view project, I was already working with uh, front-end development with web development in general. I was, let's say, a freelancer. I was mostly working with technologies like jQuery, like WordPress, and basically I was making websites for my friends, family, and people I've been recommended to. I remember when I joined the project with Vue, how easy it was to start working with it. You know, I, I, I didn't know Vue at all, but I was able to read the code. I was able to change some stuff on the website. I was able to add new features. And I must say, I immediately fall in love. I immediately, sorry, my clicker just died. I immediately fall in love with Vue. I didn't know what will be the future of Vue, of this framework. I didn't even know if this Vue is a thing, if this is something I should care about. I heard about it earlier, but it was something totally new for me. But I was about to find out soon, because what I didn't mention to you is that in my first Vue project, I was helping to create a website for the first official Vue.js conference in the world. So it was 2017. The conference took place in Wrocław, in Poland. And it was organized by Montreal, the company I just joined back then. I remember all of those people, hundreds of developers that came to Wrocław and were talking about Vue with so passion and so commitment. I was like, something new is coming. For, for me personally, it was a revolution. I, I didn't quite understand it, but I just wanted to be a part of it. And I was wondering, what is so special? What is so special about this framework? Why do people love Vue? And I made a little research. Actually, I've read one document. It was State of View report. It was released by Montreal, my company, so I, I didn't search very far. And there was a lot of great content there in the report, but there were, there were answers from a survey that was conducted on hundreds of developers, asking them about their experience with Vue. I want to mention two questions. What is the most important reason behind adding Vue to the tech stack? And most of people said it is easy to start with. There was a second question. What are the biggest advantages that Vue brings into your organization? And more than half people mentioned those three things. Ease of integration, documentation, and performance. Those answers somehow summed up what I know myself, but I couldn't name it yet. 
I know HTML, I know JavaScript, I know CSS, I was already working with those technologies, but probably I wasn't a very good developer back then. I was often lost in a huge CSS files. I was lost in gigantic HTML or PHP files. And working with those technologies for me was like working with three different developers on the same project when they actually don't like each other. However, in Vue, there was a single file component. It was the same HTML, JavaScript, and CSS, but they finally met together in person and created a team. It is not just this, that Vue is easy to start working with. It is something more. Vue, in many ways, shows you how to write good code. Actually, it's hard to write unreadable code with Vue, right? OK, it's possible. I've seen a lot of bad code written in Vue, and most of it I wrote myself. But the truth is that Vue actually guides you a little bit and shows you how to structure your application. The documentation is great. There is a style guide with best practices. So Vue was the same front end I known, but better. Since then, I had an opportunity to work on many, many different projects with Vue. I was creating small websites. I was working on large-scale applications. I was working with small and big teams. We were showing enormous amount of data in almost all possible forms, like tables, lists, graphs, trees, gigantic two-dimensional grids, even WebGL, uh, 3D graphics with WebGL, and all of that with Vue. I personally experienced how versatile and flexible this framework is. Carlos Rodriguez from Vue core team recently wrote that having a framework that can scale with your knowledge is a great adventure. And that was it. That was a great adventure. So Vue was evolving, ecosystem was growing, I was working on more and more difficult projects, but Vue worked great every single time. Those were beautiful and peaceful times. A few years later, suddenly, Vue 3 appeared. At first, it was just a curiosity for me, but soon I saw the same passion, the same commitment in the community that fascinated me at first. I felt, once again, that I want to be a part of it. I wanted to migrate to Vue 3 as soon as the first version was available. And it turned out it's not that easy. Actually, in my project, it wasn't possible at all. We had hard dependencies in my main project that did not support it view free. We had a couple of options, though. We could stop developing new features and focus on the migration and rewrite those missing pieces. We could double the team and so double the budget and have half of the team working on the migration. And as you may guess, those were not options for our client. And I tried, I really tried to find some other solutions, but I just realized I need to, I have to let it go for now. And moreover, Evan was only talking about the new toy of his. Back then I was calling it Vite or Vite. Suddenly now I am the person that corrects others. It is called Vit, you know. I had the impression that everyone around me was talking about Vue. Vue 3 was growing strong. And that was kind of, a, kind of annoying. 
Finally, I had a chance to do a couple of projects with Vue Free, and I was impressed. I was impressed how great it is. All those new stuff like composition API, totally new way of extracting and sharing logic across application, even better performance than with Vue Free. If you too, all the new libraries like Pinya for global state management with Vue Use that was mentioned yesterday a lot of a lot of times. And finally, Vite, and recently Vtest. I finally understood what the old fuss was about. So it was totally new experience. You know, Vite is one of those things that you don't know you need, but once you try it, you know it was the missing piece of a puzzle. And yes, for new projects, for greenfield projects, this is definitely ready and should be considered a first choice. But, you know, ecosystem is not that mature as for Vue 2, but it's already pretty strong. Anyway, time was going, going by, and I wasn't any closer to migrate my main project to Vue 3. I was tired. I needed a break <laughs> from <laughs> thinking about it. Not so long ago in Monterey, we decided to share our knowledge a bit wider, and we organized Vue Bootcamp. It was supposed to be an intensive training focused on practical approach to front-end development, creating front-end applications, and more general web development, and of course, with Vue in the background. Because back then, most of our projects were still using Vue 2, we decided to base our Bootcamp on this version, and we introduced Vue 3 at, as one of the topics. The whole experience was great, and it was pretty successful for us, but what I wanted to share with you is that after the bootcamp, we've collected feedback from participants about bootcamp itself, but also about Vue. And one thing was repeated in all answers. Vue is easy to start with. And it got me thinking. Deja vu, I would say. The same thing that made me fall in love with Vue hasn't changed at all. It was still there. I think I've grown up. I realized that it just needs a little bit time. I just need to be a little bit more patient. So I think I survived this developer's midlife crisis. And moreover, I, find out, I found out that even though I can't yet take full advantages of all the new stuff that is there in the Vue ecosystem, it doesn't mean that I lost something. All the things I love Vue for are still there. They haven't changed. I didn't lose anything. And actually, it's kind of the opposite. Because for new projects, I can start using Vue 3, and this part is kind of obvious. But for Vue 2 projects, I can start using new features. I can start using Composition API with a plugin. Or as we heard yesterday, it will be a native solution for version 2.7. I can start using script setup in the same way. I can start using libraries that support both Vue 2 and Vue 3, like Pinya for global state management, like Vue Use, which is a great library of utilities, composables that you can just drop into your application. I can start using Vit and even Vtest for Vue 2 application. And the great thing is that by using those tools, I'm actually moving my project closer to the point when, where it will be easier for me to eventually migrate to Vue 3 when all my dependencies will be ready. And I can tell you that I already see the moment. So ecosystem is growing up. And ecosystem is catching up. And the libraries we are waiting for are very close to being ready. And 
Today I'm here at Vue.js Amsterdam conference, and I feel a little bit the same as in 2017. Yesterday, we saw a lot of passion, and I'm sure that we'll experience even more of it today. Vue is a great framework, but the, the community is unique. I don't know the future, but with all confidence, I can say that Vue is now better than ever. And I'm pretty confident that the future of Vue will be bright. <laughs> case by case, like Evan said. And if you wish to read the whole interview with Evan, I strongly encourage you to check out our Vue report Amsterdam 2022. We prepared it specially for you, for participants of this conference, and you can grab your own printed copy in the lobby, or you can scan the QR code right now. A part of interview with Evan, there is a lot, a lot of great stuff inside. So you will find there interesting insights from core team members of Vue, of Next, showing the process of developing those tools from behind the scenes. There, is also, there are also the latest data collected in one place about Vue popularity, development trends. There are opinions and statements from, professional, from professionals from various companies, as well as five different case studies showing Vue's potential and real-world use for real-world problems. You can read how Vue can be used to solve interesting challenges, and there is also a unique content that was not published anywhere before. Those are in-depth articles on topics from the conference, so you can take the report with you and think back to the conference. Just get inspired, learn something new. As a Monterey, we want to support Vue and spread the word about it. We wanted to provide expert-based content for other experts like you to inspire, to give food for thoughts. For view lovers, from view lovers, simply to enjoy. Make sure to grab your own copy. Thank you.